Well, I'm Lindsay Smith with Real Agriculture. I'm joined now by Ashley Bruner. She's the research, research coordinator with the Canadian Centre for Food Integrity. We are at the third annual Public Trust Summit. Um, and a really interesting new piece to this puzzle is this digital ethnography, which is the study of what? It's the study of consumer behavior online. So it's scaled up to be much larger than traditional ethnography, which takes a deep dive look at people's behaviors and actions um, just observationally. So the digital ethnography looks at over 9,000 Canadians um, longitudinally, so over two years. So we're able to kind of go back in time and to look at what Canadians are doing on all kinds of online social platforms when it comes to their engagement with food information. Right. So a key part of this is trying to decipher how the average Canadian determines what's credible information online, right? Yes, that's exactly right. So that was the objective of the study. Um, So by looking at how people are acting, their interactions with others, what they read and share, we're able to see what their underlying underlying motivations are when it comes to what they trust when they when they read about food and food information. So now there are five sort of types um, in there. Tell, tell me a bit about each of them. And we did, of course, at the conference focus sort of in on one of them because one of them sort of can have a huge influence. But what are those five types of influencers, let's say? Yes. So overall, the four groups, archetypes, influencers, uh, call them what you will, um, ultimately they're all driven by how they perceive social authorities in Canada. And so their perspective on social authorities then dictates what they view to be credible or not credible in terms of food information. So on the far left, we have our challenger, and this group is most likely to trust food that um, comes from non-profit, non um, non-governmental organizations, they kind of are always on the lookout for an unknown or hidden marketing link in terms of information. Uh, To the right of that, we have the investigator. They're really driven by science and fact and and third-party credible information. So if you're trying to get some information out to them, that's what they're looking for. Um, The third one is the institutionalist. So they trust um, government information, all kinds of the traditional routes that we might be used to seeing in terms of food information, um, government and regulatory stamps, um, that's what they find credible. Next we have the, um, after the institutionalist, we have the follower. And so for them, food news and information is symbolic of majority rules. So the more people that agree with it, uh, are following it, the more likely they are to as well, particularly their social circles and their friends. And when, topics pertain to them specifically like food allergies or certain diets and then finally on the far right we have the competitor and this group is very market driven they think that any news that is backed by industry um, is more credible and they rely a lot on on their own common sense and don't typically like to be told um, what to think by government or other nonprofits that they think kind of are more fringy compared to the trusted and um, brands that they use every day. So we focused a, quite a bit on the investigator and, and why sort of that focus when we're talking about public trust and food and agriculture. Uh, So we took a look at the investigator because they actually have the most influence on the other segments, particularly the institutionalist and the follower. So if you can reach the investigator and kind of shift their mind, if you can reach them with uh, credible information, scientists scientific fact-based information, they're able to then um, engage with those other two groups and slowly shift their perceptions on on what, on food-related information. So they're kind of the key to to the rest of the kingdom. So once you can crack that that group, you have much more uh, share of voice. So within agriculture, what might that look like as far as from a, from, you know, a producer perspective or a food company perspective? What, what might that look like as far as influence? It's a bit tricky for for the food companies because the investigator are are a little bit inherently skeptical of anything that is viewed as sponsored or market driven. Um, So in our report, we talk about a need for new types of social institutions, ones that answer this call for for unbiased information driven by uh, sources that this group and many other Canadians view as trusted. So academics, scientists, things like that. Um, And of course, CCFI, we have a a resource that answers that call um, already, Best Food Facts. So 
it just so happens, we didn't predict this, but it, it worked out that a, a source, a resource like that or things like that, um, Best Food Facts is an online consumer-facing resource that answers any type of question that can be on your plate from hormones to um, baking tips to whether or not hangry is a real thing, and it is. It totally is. <laughs> My husband can, will agree. <laughs> Um, so we have uh, populated that resource with credible information from academics and dietitians and kind of third-party sources that we know that Canadians and specifically the um, investigators will find credible. So leaning on that type of information can really help um, food companies and the food system reach um, a lot of Canadians with credible information. If investigators, so investigators you said make up about 20% of the population, but they influence about 40%, who's sort of next on that list after that as far as who might have the biggest impact after those investigators? Um, aside from the investigators and their impact on, on the institutionalists and the followers, uh, we could really focus on the competitors. So they're the ones who are already using a lot of the brands that we work with and some of the bigger ones that we're familiar with. So we would encourage um, larger organizations to to lean on that, to, to get your voice out there, to not be afraid to put your logo on things and to, to be proud of being a successful brand and, and sharing their stories in that way. And so what's next for this research? It's hot off the press, so we're... we're hoping that this is can just be an overall lens that we can use to think about when we're engaging with Canadians. So kind of reassessing your communication engagement efforts and thinking about these um, values-based uh, segments or groups of Canadians um, and thinking maybe what you think is actually really effective might be completely written off because it has a certain logo on it or um, not enough people, it seems too fringy. So this is just kind of an overall lens to, to reassess how people uh, in the food system are communicating. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you.